That was too many tries. Please try again in a moment or use your Nest app to unlock. Hello again, Pietro here. Thanks for stopping by the channel. So today, something new again, lots of new stuff. Uh, like I said, I uh, wanted to do some more gadgets just besides watches and wireless charging and phones. So today we are doing a Yale wireless, well not wire, yeah, wireless smart lock. Battery powered and it's also compatible with Google. You can see the little Nest logo. So we're gonna show you how to install this and set it up. We're gonna replace this old school analog lock with the Yale smart lock. Here we go. Oh. Hey, Stefano, do you have a kitchen knife? Some of you already know this, but my dad was a dentist, so we're gonna use this descaler here to gently open this package. There we go. And inside we have, let's get started. Yeah, we don't need that. Ooh, that's pretty, ooh, I like it when the box is just kinda open like that. Oh, and then it comes out. Oh, that's heavy, hang on. So we'll do the big box first. Yeah. And in here we have something. Yeah, we don't need that. So this is the lock itself. Oh, that's cool, I can. All right, nice little computer ribbon. And that's it for that top part. So this will be on the exterior of the door. And this is gonna be on the inside. Ooh, that's nice. So if we push, oh, okay. Pretty simple yet complex. Oh, we're gonna need my descaler again. I will probably never scrape plaque off my teeth again with this one. Let's see, and in here we have, oh, spare parts. Okay, we'll use those later. Oh, don't lose that. Yay, it comes with not cheap batteries, but Duracell. Awesome, are those Energizer? Nope, Duracell, sweet. And we had one more box. Who knew dental tools could be so useful? Set up with the Nest app. Oh, very nice. Okay, so this will plug into the wall and then this will talk to the lock and let your network and your phones talk to the lock. Sweet. So this is a Nest transponder yeah, it's communicator. A yeah, we'll call it a Nest communicator. Awesome. Well, at first I thought it was just Nest compatible, but it's more than Nest compatible. It's, it's meant to work with Nest, which is great. All right. And then the QR code, that's really useful because you just scan that, boom, connect it, easy peasy. All right, let's install this. And let's get this sterilized. First things first, we need to take off the old lock. Take it away, Stefano. Okay. Okay, we got the lock off. Wow, that was really fast. So now we take this part off, right? Right. Bye bye, Schlag. Is it Schlag or Schlag? Sure. 
Schlag. We'll say Schlag. Okay. All right. Spare parts. This goes in, and it actually has an up on it. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Oh. Please fit. No, come on. Is it just a little too snug? Yes. When in doubt, use your fist. Okay, and this came with a ton of parts. Oh, so and there are the two wood screws. Oh, sure. comes with an extra. So that's the problem. Is this is too deep. Uh-oh. Okay, so this part was a little short, but right here, if you push on this little knob, this entire locking mechanism extends so it fits just the right width. Oh, you know, it was easier to get out than it is to... Oh, there we go. And then it just slides back in. So now we'll put this back in the lock. Oh wait, which way's up? Yep, that way's up. So now, let's see if it fits. Is that wide enough now? I think so. Just I hope so. Man, I was really starting to sweat. I'm like, oh no, we're gonna have to like redrill the door. That looks yeah. better. That looks like it lines up pretty well. Sweet. So we're gonna screw in that okay. tongue plate. Sure, let's call it a tongue plate. Whoop. Oh yeah, there we go. That lined up. Okay, I think that's... that is it flush though? I think oh maybe tighten the bottom one just a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, let's see if it shuts. Right. Yes! Excellent. And uh, in case you're wondering, Paramount Kit, no. De DeWalt is not a sponsor. <laughs> neither is Home Depot, uh, neither is Yale, neither is Nest. Just a fun video helping a neighbor. Okay, so I'm gonna put these guys in. And whatever you do, do not break that white cable. Okay, I believe. That's at least a $5 part. <laughs> at least. Okay, so. Get these in here. Cable. So there's the outside plate, and then there's that inner plate. So, so this inner plate has two pins, and they line up inside of this. Oh, okay. This and then do oh, we drill that plate right in? There's actually a cable hole, so I messed that. Oh, whoops. Okay, so let's just do that real fast. Makes sense. So the cable hole is at the very, very bottom. Yeah. It's virtually idiot proof. <laughs> virtually. Okay. Yeah. There we go. That's that looks nice. Pretty good. Yeah. It looks like it goes well. Yeah. Our builder didn't paint very well. That's right. We can get that fixed later. It goes. In oh, there. one in front and one in back. Well, it holds that back. Yeah, and yeah. compresses it. Yeah. So I do need the instructions. Pause. So every door has a different thickness and they provide fasteners so you can get the right so one screw three in. Fourths. One and three fourths. So we're gonna so go right there. So yeah, one black standard. So we're gonna use the black ones. I love how it's color coded. <laughs> All right. It makes it so nice. And then in the setup guide, they actually did tell you that step with the deadbolt and how it expands. So that was very useful. Strike plate. That's what we screwed in first, the strike plate. Sense. Okay. And then the keypad is on the outside. Unless you try to lock your kids in. Yeah, unless you try and lock the kids in, then you do it the reverse way, which we don't recommend. And that All connected. Right. That was really easy. So do we look, does that look good? Yeah, is it flush? Looks right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 
I'm going to hand tighten that though. So really there's just kind of four main parts. There's the outside keypad, which we already connected to the inside mounting plate. But before that, we did the deadbolt and the strike plate. So step one, take out the old one. Step two, uh, connect the strike plate and then the deadbolt. And then once you have the strike plate and the deadbolt fitting nicely, then we connected the keypad to the inside mounting plate. And right now he's just tightening everything. You're doing great, Stefano. You're doing great. Excellent. All right, that part's done. And then, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. So you know, it's, it that. threw me off because that keypad right there is not one thickness. It's kind of tapered, so it gets thinner at the top. I, I thought it wasn't fully tightened, but it is. Yeah, that's looking nice. So this is one of the tricks I do when I change these out. Is I take this old one and I run that through. Put that guy through here. Oh, and then you have everything all together. Right, and I just put the screws in, so... Why not? I don't lose the screws and I don't lose any of the pieces. And now we can sell it on eBay. <laughs> Make a quick ten bucks. Actually, those are a lot more in deadbolts now are what 20 30 yeah i don't know it's a schlag 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 um unfortunately you know you, the screws don't hold in place um then we'll put the whole thing in a ziploc bag yep almost the last step stefan is going to connect the cable to the whatever parts where's the, the key oh yeah we're gonna need that okay so. so this part's security, which is kind of cool. You have to put that in, and it kind of pops out the battery. And then it came with four AA batteries. Awesome. Okay, so this then connects into here. Turn. There's a little feeder area for the cable. A path. There we go. Nice. Yep, you got your factory reset button there. Okay. Um, cable. Nice. Up. Snug in there, yep. And that's that's it. So we're just gonna make sure that this is turned the right way. So it's open right now. So we're gonna turn it all the way to the left. And oh, I guess it's there we go. Gonna match it up with the hole. Yeah, that'd be good. Otherwise it can't turn the lock. It should just kind of click on. Yeah, yep, there just. Goes. All right, so there's two little screws that go into here. Oh, that fasten it to the plate. Right, exactly. Do you want me to hold that or you got uh, it? If you want to hold that, yeah. just the top there would be yeah. good. Huh? Whoops. Oh, we dropped one. Casualty. Happens with every install. Okay, so this actually has to be lifted up. So it fits in that little gap. There we go. Two. Okay, just before I tighten that up, was easy. make sure this is right. Okay, it looks like it seals in there correctly. All right, we'll just tighten those up. Actually, is, should there, oh, I see. Yeah, you're gonna tighten them. And now it's gonna be nice and flush. Okay. Nice. So that's in there and the lock works. Yay. I'm glad it came with Duracell batteries and not some inexpensive, no brand. Oh, that was a nice little touch. Yeah, I like Dursa. Although the Energizer Bunny is, you know, a fan as well. Hi from Yale and Best. Press the Yale logo to begin. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so the Yale logo is on the outside here. Start by creating the master code. It should be four to eight. Oh, digits hang on. Pause. Okay, we set our master code, and now we have to lock out Steven. So he typed in the code. Did it work? Nice. Yay! That was easy. Yeah, we're just trying. Seriously, that was, then just put the plate on and sweet. So now we go get that little nest thing. Oh, and so I uh, want to see the numbers. Yeah. So if you push the Yale button without putting a code in, it auto locks it. Oh, okay. And we have a temporary code. That's really bright. Yeah, works pretty well. 
And then after you put in the code, boom, unlocks. Nice. Fancy. Now, can you unlock it with your phone? Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll show that in just a minute. So we download the Nest app, and then this is the Nest transmitter, and this is going to talk to the lock. This will talk to the lock, and then also the Wi-Fi, well, through Wi-Fi to the Nest app, and then we can unlock the door with our phone. So now we just plug this in. Oh, yeah, we have to add it. So we'll do add. Scan the QR code. Boom. It amazes me. Look, I mean, it wasn't even that close was fast. to the square. That was fast. I like QR codes. Wake up the Nest Connect. All right. Press and hold the button. Oh, I bet we have to plug it in. Hang um, on. Oh. Yeah, because it needs power. Oh, no. It's on. Yep. Yeah, okay, now we can plug it in. Oh, so this has a lithium battery in it. Connecting, connecting to your Nest Connect. Looking for Wi-Fi networks. And then as soon as it finds the Wi-Fi network, you just choose your Wi-Fi. It's gonna ask you to log in and authenticate. Connecting, setting up Wi-Fi. It has been two weeks and we've been playing around with the Yale Smart Lock and we ran into some problems. The main issue was it would not connect to Wi-Fi. We searched online, no help. We read the manual, that was lame. We rebooted all the devices, that didn't work. We rebooted the internet router, that didn't work. We updated the home Wi-Fi equipment. Uh, we're running a Ubiquity system using the Unify uh, line, and it still wasn't work. So the, in nerdy terms, we even did a firmware update. And then it came down to the access points. So what was the fix? We created a new access point and we restricted to only 2.4 gigahertz. So the main issue with this Yale lock not commuting to the Wi-Fi was it was connecting through 5G and that signal was not compatible. If you're having issues with your Yale smart lock not connecting to your home Wi-Fi or your apps, make sure you're not connecting it to your five gigahertz network and connect it to a 2.4 gigahertz access point. And now we'll show you the reasons why to purchase this Yale lock and what we like about it. So our last question of the video, why buy a Yale smart lock? So here's the lock right there. As soon as I click on it, lock, there we go. How cool is that, right? And then I'd have to type in a passcode, but I don't want to show you my passcode. So now it's unlocked. Number one, keyless entry. Person comes home, all they do is they touch the Yale logo. What am I doing wrong, Steven? Here we go. Okay, so when it's locked, <laughs> they would touch the Yale logo and then they would type in the passcode and then it unlocks. Each family member has their own password. That's item number two. Number three, you have remote surveillance for the lock. If you want to know if all the exterior doors in your house are locked or unlocked, you can quickly check on the app. Number four, there's timestamps every time the door opens and closes and if it's unlocked or locked. So that's really cool. And then number five, if you wanted your neighbor to water your plants, you can give your neighbor a guest password that only works for that one week or that one night. And number six, battery life. It runs on four double A's and that's gonna let you use it for, what do we, what do we estimate about? Several months. Uh, I would say maybe even a year or two. Yeah, at least at least six months. At least six months. So almost as long as your smoke smoke alarm. All right. So let's look at the app that you can use. So this is the the basic Nest app, and it ties all your Nest products together. So this is the one for the lock. Um, so here's our front door. So we select that product. It takes us to dashboard for the lock. So Right now it's unlocked, or sorry, it's locked. So if we hold this, and it goes and locks it. We hold it again, we can unlock it. So this is nice, so you can see what, what status your door lock is in at any time. So if we come over here and we uh, look at the family and guests, we can add different people to this different household members. Um, here's the guest option. So we can say cleaners or cleaner. OK, 
continue. And now we can come in here and restrict the information. So it starts now, it expires never. If we come in here, we can say they can only come in on Thursdays. And it's not all day access. We only want to allow them in from you know, 10 until you know, may maybe five o'clock. That's awesome. So now they can only gain access between the hours of 10 and five on Thursdays and maybe it's only for a month so we'll say it expires midnight on April 3rd awesome I like it the interface is pretty easy that's another cool point yeah it's pretty straightforward so it's Google so where one of the where this connection come in handy is if you've got a rental property yeah and you want to give guests access for a week and then it revokes it you can also see uh, you don't have to rekey the place. You don't have to worry about people stealing your keys, all variety of things like that. Or if you're showing your house because you want to sell it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, here's the history. So you can see all of the different events that have occurred and timestamps. Your name right there. Yeah, front door right. lock, Stephen. Because okay, it, it cool. used my application. Nice. So I don't think it gives you any more information than that, but that's okay. Now, what happens if the power goes out? Like, what if the batteries stop working? Uh, it notifies you, and I think oh, it'll just okay. retain where it's been at. So, uh, you can also set a privacy mode and just say, just lock it and don't allow anyone to come in. Oh, okay. So, Shut if you want, you want to lock the kids Quarantine. out. <laughs> Quarantine mode. So, we've got a variety of other features here, some notifications, um, so you can so, you know, notifications for when it's locked or unlocked because everybody opens the door, forgets it, and walks away. So what you can say is after a minute, we want it to auto lock. So cool. if it's unlocked, it'll lock. So we'll leave that on for now because, you know, English, Spanish, Spanish and French. French. It's, there's no Italian. That's, that's a know. shame. That's, yeah. So uh, we're going to have to give it a rating of four stars. <laughs> Exactly. Well, that's pretty yeah. Cool. So that's that's kind of a, a quick rundown. There are some cool neat. You know, use your phone. So if your phone leaves leaves the house or leaves the area, it can auto lock for you. Awesome. Um, Home away assist. Cool. Yeah, and that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. Last unlocked by you three minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we'll try a manual button here. Privacy mode is off. Press and hold to turn it on. So now I just enabled privacy mode. There are certain features and functionality you can enable or disable if you don't have your phone. And that's a really good feature that Yale offers. So here's an example of the temporary passcode. What is it again? <laughs> <laughs> 1345. So if I enter an incorrect one, and it doesn't let you set it to 1234, by the way, and what's mine again? 1345. And then it opens. Yay! And I'm in. That is the end of our Yale smart lock how-to video. I hope you enjoyed that honest gadget review. A, a door gadget this time that was new for me. I have never actually installed the one. Thank you Stefano for letting me into your home. It's been over a month now. I followed up with the family. All is well with the lock. The kids love it. They really like that keyless entry. No keys at all. Just type in a pin pad or use their phone. And the parents like knowing who's coming into their home with those timestamps and notification through Nest. <clears throat> Any uh, pithy comments, just type those down below. And my mantra for the year, numbers mean something and numbers mean nothing at all. Oh yeah, and let the credits roll for the Paramount Kid. Goodbye.